I wanted to introduce Harold Jacobs. Harold is a person who we have come to depend on probably a lot more than we should, but it is more of an, a testament to the volume of knowledge that he has based on the training that he has received and asked for and sought out from any wide range of elders from different communities around Southeast. And because of that, we are exceptionally grateful to have a resource person, even at this person's young age. Oftentimes, we go to those who are elders and ask them. And unfortunately, sometimes we wear our elders out. And we don't mean to do that. But we're hungry for information, traditional knowledge, and language that they know. And we're just exceptionally grateful for Harold to come forward and talk to us and put a presentation together that is really challenging for us to think about. But we need to do it. Names and adoptions are something that is perhaps sensitive, yet it's the time is right to talk about it now. And he also included a person that's gonna wasn't able to join us in person, but is going to join us by telephone. And I know it's not going to be able to be captured that well on videotape, but we will get the sound from that person and the knowledge from that person. So without further ado, and I think that sound was just an indication for me to move on, please give a warm welcome to Harold Jacobs. Could I have Anita Lafferty, Florence Shakley, and Ida come up here? Sitting here at the table with us is Anita Lafferty, Florence Shakley, and Ida. It's easier to say your clinket name then. <laughs> what she said. Kalmican. I thought of how to start this off, and I thought of a Bible verse. It's Matthew 6, 27. It says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? I said, wow. Likewise, I would add, which of you, by receiving a clinket name, can become a clan leader, house master, or add to your stature? We are who we are through our mothers. And Sergey mentioned something a couple minutes ago. I guess I'm a very hard-headed person because I don't back down from things. And of course, when I don't back down, I get personal attacks, anonymous letters, hate mail. <clears throat> Things that probably would have driven somebody into the ground, but I just ignored it and moved on. And then when they couldn't get at me, they attacked my mother in letters, saying she was adopted. Well, I know who my mother is. My mother's name is Costine, which was also her mother's name. We're young Yadi from the hit plane, the big house, Taku. My mother's biological mother died September 8th. 1930, just 17 days before my mom's third birthday. Maxine Hayes was the, my mom was the youngest of four children from that marriage. Maxine's mother's name was Saganet. The brothers of Saganet were Stauquait and Gutsch. Gutsch is the one that I'm named after. Their father was Shkuyesh from Wrangell, whose father was Nanyai whose name was Guknao. The mother of Sakonet was Tseyastin, and Tseyastin was the daughter of Kudagan. I know who I am, and I didn't appreciate these remarks and anonymous attacks against my mother. If you're going to attack somebody, attack me, not my mom. I've put up with these attacks for years, and I just figured I'm not going to stand for this anymore. 
One of these is these adoptions. These names, this lineage, this is who I am, this is how I was born, and this is how I will live, and this is how I, how I will die. We are who we are through our mothers. Nothing will ever change that. And although I'm a Dakhlawadi Yadi and a grandchild of the Deshitan, I will always remain what my mother is. No amount of adoptions, name giving, or opposite side recognition at potlatches will ever change that. If your mother is white, you are. If your mother is Mexican, you are. If your mother is black, you are. If your mother is Chinese, you are. No amount of names or money can ever make you a bud blood born clinket through your mother unless you are born that way. We had a unique system of names and one used to be able to tell where someone was from just by hearing those names. Houses add their own, own names, but today the system seems to have been widely lost. Names were given at birth. I heard someone remark one time that his name was more important than his uncle's because he got his name at a party and his uncle didn't. And I heard Lee talk about earlier about how children, how non-natives are getting clinket names, but there's a lot of our own clan members who don't have names. And I've heard some people say you have to wait till, for a party to give the person a name. That's ridiculous. What if you waited five years for a party to come along and you had 20 kids running around, hey you, hey you, hey you. Can you imagine how that would have been, waiting for a party to get a clinket name? Well, what happened was my father's clan, there was a party held and they weren't, my father's people were not informed about the party. It was hosted by adopted people. The woman's relatives did not know about the party. My aunt did not know about the party. The clan leader did not know about the party until a week before the party. I had lost so much last year. That was pretty much the final straw. And I don't know how many of you ever saw my letter I sent out on emails called Shattered. If you did, that's the way I felt, shattered, because it felt like my fathers had been ripped away from me because they were ignored by adopted people, kept out of the picture. I'm not knocking everybody who's adopted and been given names. Many non-natives have been adopted and contribute greatly to parties and clan functions. Some of them are sitting in here today. I'll just say your clinket names. Yaisha State. Danauk. Ichte. Khwainak. Sakhten. Kashtahinish. My aunt's husband, Kesh Kanasain. A lot of these people work and contribute and help break their backs to support their in-laws or the clans they've been adopted into. But not one of these people has ever tried to overstep their bounds in a clan and be a clan leader or a housemaster. I've seen some people who get clinket names and think they can hang on, hang on to a clan hat even saw one who had a talking staff made for him. These staffs are called Ankawo Utsaka, a big man's staff. These are symbols of the clan, but he thought because he was adopted, he could have one of those made. I remember a man in Angoon received a clinket name and he walked up to one of the clan leaders and said, I'm now your uncle. Well, the clan leader let him live for that moment. But he said, you will never be my uncle. You have my uncle's name, but don't come up to me and declare yourself to be my uncle. I know who my uncles are. I am not the one who gave you that name.
I have some people that think because they received a Clinkett name, and I'll use mine for example, if somebody said that, well, this man was a child of the Yadi, so I'm a child of the Yadi too, because the name I got, when that person was a child of that clan. I don't think so. I don't think we have the same, same fathers in that. To put it plainly, Clinkett names are like fur coats. Give them to some people and they think they're King Kong. <laughs> you want to read a good book on adoptions, read Sergei Kahn's book, Strangers to Relatives. You should have brought some books with you. Talks about adoptions of anthropologists. I don't know if, how many of you were at the welcoming Tuesday night. Uh, Sergey was given the name of my uncle Ernie, and I said this name Kanak is little stranger because Sergey's a little stranger than the rest of us. But <laughs> they only told it twice. <laughs> I've heard some. I know of one instance where someone is Clinkett, his wife is white, but his son got a name from the man's father's clan. So he thinks that because his son and his father, the boy's grandfather, are the same clan, that makes him a Chushka Dutch Khan, his own grandchild. That's something you're born into. You can never be adopted into that. Some have decided they can be clan leaders, house masters, even though the mother is not Clinkett. I remember Cecilia Kuhn's story. The oh, white man, a uh, man, white man walked up to her. She was eating. She said, he said, boy, I sure wish you had, I had your appetite. He said, first you take our land and then our language. Now you want my appetite? <laughs> How many of you have heard the term that they use about when someone dies or has died and they say duck de wogut, or walking deep into the forest? I had an email about an adopted person that died one time and it said this person was now walking into the forest. It reminded me of a little boy in church. The teacher asked him, asked her Sunday school class, how many of you want to go to heaven? Everybody in the room but one little boy raised his hand. She said, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, not if these guys are going. <laughs> well, that's what I thought when they said this person was walking into the forest. Are they going to take that away from us too? This has been a major issue for me, especially in seeing shaman names and housemaster names, clan leader names being given to non-natives who now think they have the right to run parties and give away names from clans they're adopted into. But I'll turn this over to Vida while she's on the phone. Vida is a fluent speaker of Clinkett. She is not Clinkett. She was adopted. And she, I was hoping she could be here, but I'm glad she agreed to call in on the phone today. So I'll have Ida, Vida comment on this. Vida? You can call me anything, but don't call me late for dinner. In 1947, I was adopted by the Marshalls that lived here in Sitka. The lady's name was Mary Marshall, and Eddie Marshall, Kate each Kagwan Tan. While staying with them, I learned how to speak Slingit in six months, and that turned on 
the lady's eyes up a little more, and she said, what if I should teach her how to speak more, and then I'll teach her other things as well. This lady was not an English-spoken person. She spoke nothing but shrink it all day long, 24-7. And my adopted dad, he believed in the English language, and he spoke to me in English in the evening. So a party, she set up a party, and it was held at the Star Cafe owned by Nick and Mary Palayo at that time. And I remember she was coaching me for two weeks. I think she coached me. And that day, the party before my name was given to me, I had to say something. And after I got my name, I had to give my acceptance speech. And this was done all in sync. And I still remember that they had to boost me up on the bench to face the people. I remember such people as Annie and Charlie Dick, Annie and uh, Charlie Joseph, May Moy. Those were the few I can remember. And uh, I was given a made-up name, and it meant the foam that forms at the boulders beneath the cliff, and that is called Cape Cod. And while I was being ready to be given, being accepted into the Duxtane Town clan, Mrs. Marshall and her clan sister, May Moy, they talked, they talked to me and told me that once I became adopted, I cannot claim a clan house. I cannot uh, use any crest unless I was given permission to, to use and not to commercialize on it either. And I was not to participate in any clan planning unless I was asked to. And I was to sit quietly and listen to what everything is going on and also to be careful about what I said and did because it would reflect back to the clan and myself. And I was always to be respectful and helpful. And uh, like I mentioned, I was given a made-up name. And I was thinking about giving this and saying it, but then you know, yeah, you attend ka kanak ki ka udu ki haya, you attend kus ki apwani, you attend ki ayin khust yin at. Of course, we were forced to learn their language, so therefore, there's a lot of you young people that do not understand Shinkit, and I just wanted to tell you in English what I would have told you in Shinkit because I did not want to be misinterpreted. And I respect the clan that I was adopted into, and I highly respect my mother that adopted me and all the clan sisters from there, and she was from the Tuxpits. So my very good friend Sergey and Anita, hello. They are with the in Kachti, you Kachti Tan, Turkish. Translate that, Harold. Say it again. Ah, uh -huh. you're just like the young kids we talk, but you don't listen. Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Harold. I said this is all I'm going to say, and uh, thank you for inviting me to. To take up a little bit of your time. Okay, I hope guys are here. Good night, good night. I got three clinker women up here. I thought this would be good to have them up here because I dare anybody to argue with a clinker woman. Well, well, who wants to start off first on these? You. <laughs> Florence? Okay. Goodness, Chish. Thank you, Kleina Kakatlat, you could do a sock. Great Kakleina Florence Mark Shakely, you could do a sock. Yetna Hat City, Sukar Shai Hat, Chukanadi Yadi. Boy, this is 
I didn't think it'd be this hard looking at everybody. But I, I thank Harold for uh, asking me to come up because this has always been an issue with our family and uh, uh, giving names, people giving names away. To me, um, names are at oo. They, they're clan at oo. And for us to be frivolously giving them away is uh, probably something our ancestors didn't want us to do. And um, we need to guard our names, like our names come through the mother. And uh, these are relatives, relatives of mine, relatives of my mom's, my mom's uh, you know, on the mother's side. And uh, we think highly of those names. And um, as for uh, giving trinket names to your uh, children, the names are kept by somebody in the family. And uh, at this time, uh, my brother Johnny knows most of the Tlokalkade names that we, we can give out and that we can use. And I usually um, ask him about names. And he's, as he remembers them, he's starting to give them to me. And uh, I'm writing them down now that I can spell in Tlingit. I used to only speak in Tlingit, but now I can read it and spell it too, thanks to my sister Nora. But um, the Tlingit names are, um, should be recorded by the eldest person in your um, clan, and then it should be passed on down to um, somebody else that can uh, give the names also. We shouldn't hoard them. We shouldn't uh, keep them from our clan members. You heard about uh, my my niece Lee talking about us giving away big um, trinket names to people, but our own children don't have any names. And I can attest to that because I I teach at the University of Alaska in um, Juneau here, and I. I have a paper that I call, Who Am I? And uh, it came from uh, Nora's book, The Beginning Thing, it, Nora and Dick. And uh, my mom and I expanded on it. We include the grandparents, and we include the other things that are important to identifying yourself. I heard somebody say that a long time ago here, that just the mere mention of your Tlingit name, you were able to tell where this person came from, what house they belonged to, and all those kind of things. And that doesn't happen anymore because we're not knowledgeable in our, um, on our Tlingit names and also our clan, our clan people. And um, names are something that you have to live up to that are given to you. And uh, one uh, example I can give is uh, my brother-in-law, Hwai Nak. When he joined the family, um, he wasn't given a name right away. My dad watched and um, the good works and everything that he did is what earned him his name. Papa saw that he was going to be a good man and that he was going to be a good caretaker for my sister. So he got he got the name Hwai Nak, and um, this is how we how we gauge who we're going to give our names to. You know, through the good works that they do. And once you're given a name, you don't just get that name. You're there forever. You're part of the family forever, and you also. This is the part that people don't understand. Whenever your clan um, does something, you have to be there too. 
not just the immediate family that lost the clan member. You know, I always hear some people say, well, they're not from my house, so, you know, I don't have to worry about it. But they are, in a sense, from your house, because once your clan house gets uh, too crowded, you build another one and give it another trinket name. See, trinket names are being given to them. So you do come, you're from the head clan house, and our names are um, the same way. The clan houses are given trinket names, our children are given trinket names, even the atu that we have are given names. The, Blankets and stuff that we commemorate at Kluik uh, are given trinket names. And um, those of the ones that have uh, been given trinket names that are not uh, trinket born, I appreciate and uh, like the respect that they hold for the trinket people and for the um, clans that adopted them because um, you're the ones that are going to show example. And uh, also, when when you're given a big trinket name, like uh, Harold said, the title doesn't come with it. You have to earn it. Even being trinket born, you have to earn that title. Yeah, what good news, Chish? Sing it in a Sakai Hotel Sak. My thing name is Sakai. Kate Cock in a Anita Lafferty. My, um, my mother's name was Ida Osborne Kedashan. My stepdad was David Kedashan, Katya Yudovasak. My mother's name was Kashtina. And my mother used to be in charge of all the names that was given to my children. And she told me that it was going to be up to, <laughs> to me to give the our grandchildren names. You think of a name before the child is born of one of your relatives that are gone. And then when the child is born, they're born with the name. You don't wait for a to give the name. So that's how we were taught. And right now there's a lot of other people that wants names and a lot of kids I know that doesn't have names. I try to tell all my grandkids, remember your name. What we are doing now, my son Ozzy, is putting all the names in the computer. And I try to make sure he says the name right. So, it's good to have it all down on paper and either on your computers. Everybody has computers now but me, so you guys can uh, put it in your computer so you can remember it and don't forget it. That's how we were taught. As we were growing up as children, I lost my dad when I was six. And then, a long time ago, they used to have seen good ways of being married. So that's what they done to my mom. <coughs> my dad's nephew was placed by my mother. <clears throat> Katya Yudo Sauk David Kedeshan. And he's the one that brought us up in a strict way. We were never punished but we were talked to after a dinner table, after we get done with our dinner. They tell us not to leave the table 
until you listen. And that's how we were taught, just to listen. So every time we went to a Kuih, mom used to tell us, listen, listen to what people are saying. That's how you're going to learn. Even if you don't speak Tlingit, listen to the people that are speaking in Tlingit. You won't remember it now. I think that's how I was. It's all coming back to me. What they used to say to us. And even the stories, some of them are slowly coming back to me. By the time they all come back to me, I'll be gone, I guess. But that's how we were raised. Strict but not meanness. We were all treated alike in our family. <clears throat> Mom always says, you treat one like that, it's got to be all even. Treat all your kids the same way. And that's what we're listening to today about all the kids that are being out, given, adopted to the other people or even our grandchildren is given, given to other people to adopt them. And I don't think that's right. What they should do is give the mothers a chance. And um, <clears throat> So I guess that's all I have. Maybe if um, somebody says something, I'll think of some more. I'm not used to speaking in public. It's all Harold's fault. He told me the last minute. Otherwise, I would be prepared. <laughs> I'll see him after this. Good <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> That wasn't the last minute. I gave you at least 10 minutes warning. <laughs> Before Ida speaks, I just want to say that I've been hoping for a long time. It still hasn't happened. I'm still looking for some upper income white family to adopt me. Kunischisch, <laughs> I khoni we khatsati yadakh you uh Douglas away kutatian yet kusani we to to do ish kona adu ish kutati ha in a wish kasnigan to cook ye ha kusigenki skun wan we khatsati khatsu I uh, come from inland. My father was born and raised here in, in Douglas. And my grandmother was uh, from Angoon, and she went in the interior and got married up there. My father got married up there to my mom, too. They had an arranged marriage, and they were married for about 56 years. And on their 50th anniversary, my brothers and I and my sister, we, we um, gave them a trip to come down here to Juneau, but he didn't recognize anything around here. Everything changed so much. <laughs> he said their, um, their village was gone, and all his relatives, all the, all the people he knew, most of them, was, 
all gone just with young people here. He didn't know anybody at all. We were raised like um, the ladies here, they said that their parents um, were good to them, but they were strict with them. That was like in our house too. If we, had, if we needed a talking to, my dad used to always talk to us after we had supper at the supper table, then, then he would talk to us. We were brought up so to be respectful of everybody and everything. And <clears throat> my parents, my mother really worried about us uh, using somebody else's name and stuff because it's so important to have our own names. That uh, when my dad was alive, they made a, a book, it's called Ha Shagun. And all our Deshitan names, I didn't tell you that my mom was Deshitan, my grandmother was Deshitan. We split a long time ago from, from down there. That's why my, my crest is the split beaver, split tail beaver, we, they call us. I know down here you guys call us Konana, but we're not really Konana. We're, we're one of you. <clears throat> my mother, my mother uh, made this book for us, for the Deshitan people and for her brother's children, so that we won't make mistake and use somebody else's name. So we have this book for our people. And it's, it's in the college library in Whitehorse. And we all, they all made sure that we got a copy of it because they knew that we were younger generations and, we, and they didn't want us to get lost because it's so important for us. We know that we can't give anybody else's name to, to our family. We have to stick to our own names and stuff. And sometimes when we adopt somebody, like one of my cousins adopted a, a, a man, and uh, she didn't want to give him an Kao name, a, a high class name. So she gave him a name and she called him Coach Gugu and <laughs> Wolf Ears. <laughs> And myself, I had to give names to uh, some people, and I just used flowers. I used um, kayani, you know, springtime green leaves, and sluth, fireweeds, and, and things like that that we could use. But we can't use any, we have to make sure that we don't use any of on cow names, our names. And they want us to make sure that we don't give anybody else's name to our children. And all our children were named before they even born. When my cousin's daughter was expecting, she made sure that I was there with her so that she got, that the baby got a name as soon as she was born. When the baby was born, the doctor handed that baby to me. But it was really funny before, I used to work in the hospital and, and um, this doctor was a woman and I, I didn't know who she was, I hadn't seen her before because I was retired then. And um, I was washing her up and changing her gown and stuff and this lady standing there wasn't doing anything so I gave her the dirty linen and I told her, put that in the linen basket, I told her. <laughs> And here all the time it was the doctor, for heaven's sake. <laughs> After I found out, I just about had a fit. <laughs> anyway, um, we gave her, uh, we gave her uh, a, a good name and she was born. That, that's the way I was born. I was named for my grandma. My grandma gave me her name herself. Kak and she and Tlaustla. Kak and she, I asked, Mom, what does that mean? And she said, the man's song, she said. And, and Tlusla means busy mother. So I have been really busy all the time. <laughs> so I live up to my name. And <clears throat> I'm not sure if I touched everything I was supposed to. <laughs> um, yeah, my father uh, had three names. And um, 
He was born Dakhlawedi, and his sister died when he was really young. And uh, because his stepfather was a uh, Deshiton, he wasn't allowed to uh, give any money to the potlatch or anything. So, just my father was about ten years old, something like that, and they were in Dawson at the goal, at the goal. Um, uh, 98, and he was working there. He was only about 10 years old, and they used to give him picks and shovels and stuff to take it up to the mine, and they gave him a dollar for every trip. And he was lucky if he got two trips today. Then when he came home from work, his mother gave him 10 shells, and he had to go out and get 10 things. He had to get rabbits, gophers, and grouse, anything, as long as he brought home 10. If he, if he missed any shots, he really got heck for it. And then his mother would clean all the animals that he got. She fixed it all up and clean it up, and then, then she took it down to the Chinese restaurant. So, and he, um, he paid her really good. So when, um, when they made the party, they took the headstone way back in the bush, and they got it there. They got it there, and I guess my grand, my step grandfather, took it in there for them. And and uh, the Yenyedis were so surprised at how that that little boy and his mother worked so hard to get all that stuff in there. They got lots and lots of stuff in there because they used to do trading too inland. And uh, when um, when they gave the party. One of the Yenyedi grandfathers gave him a Yenyedi name, Clertin. They said, steady like a rock. That was his potlatch name they gave him at that time. And he told him, Yedididach Yenyedi Ikochsati. He said, from this day forward, he said, you're going to be Yenyedi, he said. So a lot of people ridicule me when I dance for Yen Yedis, when I dance for my father. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, I, I know those people don't know the story of, of my father, but uh, I think uh, we were really lucky to have, to have somebody like that, and he always talked to us and all my cousins and all, all the babies, even when they were babies, he used to talk to them. So we were really lucky to have a, pa a father and a man that was so knowledgeable. He was a real, real old-timer. And um, he died in 1970. My mother died in 1991. My father told us when we were in school not to, not to let them get the best of us. He always told us, you come from really good family. He used to tell us. I'm going to try to find out who John Kate was. <laughs> I know he was supposed to, be a, a supposed to be a big chief in this country one time. So that, that's my father. And uh, my mother was one of the women that was married off into the interior. There was four or five of them married in inland. So we got relatives all over in the Yukon because that was the trading time when they, when they married them girls off up that way. And they were supposed to be daughters of a big chief down here. So that's how they, they got up in there. But we still know that our roots are down in this country. That's why we always like to come and visit all of you. I um, I can't remember all of my father's names. The one that he uses all of the time. Um, I've got a senior moment. Could you repeat all that? <laughs> uh, 
just listening to the names that you said and, and giving people the names. If I was a guy and you gave me the name Little Flower, I don't think I'd be too happy. Oh, <laughs> oh these were girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, take any questions or comments, but I wanted to ask Ray Dennis to speak first if you want to say something. This topic that we have today of uh, adoptions, while I was sitting thinking of this topic and wondering who was sitting behind me and looking at our speakers, it was like trying to understand what our ancestors saw many generations back when there was a lot of our number amongst all of us. One of the things that kept popping into my mind was we are a self-respecting people. We cling it people. This is an idea that is talked a great deal a lot in the Chilkat area. Being self-respecting, you know who you are by way of where your name comes from, who carried it before you, the clan that you come from, the house that you come from, who you're re related to, and especially how you're related to that person. That makes all the difference in the world as to how you're going to treat others, even if you don't like them. This is a true statement. In life, if we are to be loved, we have to first express that love. In doing so, I want to acknowledge my father's people, the Dakshawedi and the Dakshusha that are here. I'm always very happy to see you. My grandfathers, the Chukanedi and the Chukan Shah. When we express how we are related to each other in this fashion, that express from deep within our love for our relations. One of the most special love comes from when it covers your head, the outer shell, that would be the great-grandfathers, the Tequedi, the Kaguantan. With these kind of understandings, if a person that gets adopted starts to realize this, it would be no problem for them to know their place. Because when you know your place, you have your self-respect. And that is a very, very important thing that we as Shlingit people should contemplate within ourselves and try not to put ourselves ahead of somebody else because we've got a big name. These names that we have, as my mother had spoke, in case you don't know this young lady in the middle, this one's my mother. She looks younger than I do. I'm real self-respecting. I know where, what side my bread is buttered on. <laughs> well, since I'm on re relatives, I also need to acknowledge my Aunt Nora and my sister Lee. It's real important once we start to connect all of our relations, it causes a person to stand up and stand firm. In the opening of this particular session, we had words of how somebody who gets adopted, given a big name, will take it upon themselves to feel that they have the right to do whatever anybody in the clan that they're adopted to. I have to come back to self-respect. 
If that individual is taught from the very beginning exactly who they are, there's no problem. I remember when my grandfather was watching my uncle Richard. He watched him real close and that's how he became part of my grandfather's people. In our clan, when we bring somebody in, it is because of their works that they, they do in their desire to just be in assistance to our clan. I have one individual that has the same name that I have, the very first name I was given. It wasn't Du. <laughs> it was Tsakwasht. It is from the day sun hit at Yendastakhya. My namesake is Jack David, his English name. My uncle, my predecessor, Austin Hammond, had loved his uncle so much that he gave that name away to a few individuals. One in particular, I really appreciate this, this man because he helped us out so much over the years, and that is Len Sevity. He's a little older now, but because of my affection for understanding where my uncle's love for him was that, and his love for his own uncle, that I call him myself. When I walk up to him, I say, how are you doing myself? Because we carry the same name. In no way fashion does he step over the boundaries to assume that he is part of our, our leadership. Leadership is a very, very key thing in our Tlingit way of doing things. You're not elected, you're born into it. There is a certain line that the leaders come from. To assume a position, that is another thing. In the day and age that we live in, it becomes seemingly that's the only way we can have our leaders. However, I do know that in our Schlingit world that we have more than enough self-respecting Klingit people. And I'm looking at an audience full of self-respecting people. So with that, I'll give you some exercise. Give yourselves a hand. I was trying to make sure that I cover everything. To look at this young individual that is standing here with the women that are sitting behind me, <clears throat> you would never think that this young man would ever stand up and speak. Because as a young man growing up, I had many uncles a grandfather that had his own boat. I had no say. My very first job on board our, our purse saner, our halibut boat, the new Annie, was to stay out of the way, but to watch everything that they're doing. And as time went by, I learned how to become a commercial fisherman. Now I know better than to be one. But without the help of uncles, this is very, very key to our men. You have to have your uncles. Sometimes you don't see eye to eye, but nonetheless, we men, we need our uncles. My mother's brothers, I need them. My sisters, they need their aunties. 
our people. We need each other in this fashion. That way it keeps a lot of the hard feelings that can get seeded into us way out on the outside. As we look a little closer into our own lives and we really realize just who we are, it makes all the difference in the world. It helps us become lovable, not because we have to, but because we can. There is nothing greater and stronger than the ability to tell your relative how much you love them. And that's what we do as Tlingit people when we talk to our father's people, our grandfathers, our outer shell. Many of us have other clan, clan brothers that would stand alongside at certain times when we need the, the help the most, they're there. Oftentimes, I have seen many of our opposites from the Eagles, like our brother Jerry, standing alongside the Dakhlawadi people and the true Canadians standing along with each other and the Shungu KD, the Tekwadi, the Kaguantan. When this young man sees the opposite side, the relatives that come, the weakness in my legs, they disappear. The strength in my back becomes stronger. Not because of self-pride, but because of the love that is expressed just by you simply being here. You don't have to say a word. That is how this young man sees self-respect. If we can translate that to those that have been adopted and they start to realize this and they see their place, our brother, he wouldn't have the feelings that he had earlier this year. In this room we have more, more clans than I've seen in a long time, even though we have such a short, small audience. When we go back to our respective homes, our communities, if this young man's voice has given you that key that you need, share it with someone. You don't have to tell them who, who it was birthed by or whose voice you heard it from. Because I don't want fame. I don't need it. I just got to look pooty. With that, I, I want to thank Harold for giving me an opportunity to say a few words and just to give a, an idea of what some of our generation is looking at. Not all of us have all the answers. In other words, what I'm saying to all of us that are in here and those that are out amongst the building that can hear, we need each other. If we are to survive another 10,000 years, that's what we need, is each other. Life is hard enough with what we must endure. And I know that in our Tlingit way of doing things, there is nothing prettier than the way we Tlingit people handle things when it comes time for need. And nobody can throw a party like us Slingit. Gunas Chish, Atlain, Gunas Chish, Oh. Gunas Chish, Ach Ates, Ach Sunnihas, Ach Idah Kawahai, Ach Kwe Yuwe, Hatu Wasak on Kuchiti. Ach, lieb, du sei, 
Yaktatahaya Kedekwan. You Copper River Dahaya Dakaswasi Dakya Akshagudke. Akhishka awe tekwaidi tekwaidi wa akhishas. Akhishta awe kajiti nyu dasagun guh chwasi wat dudu guh chwasiti guh. Akhtani ya nakhka awe akhtita duta awe stanta yu wa dasagun. Do each car away, Kus at Setakhene, the renowned worldwide Setak, known as Setak River, was where my, grand, my mother's father came from. My father, on the other hand, Tekwedi, came from Anklan River. They migrated up from down below here and lived for a while in a uh, dry bay area. From dry bay, they moved to Anklan because there was so much uh, fur and different thin animals that you could get. Thank <laughs> The the boy is raised by his uncle to know how to hunt and do the things men do to keep the family going. The aunt on the mother's side called Katak, little mother, she's the one that teach, taught the sister, the daughter to sew, to put up food, and cook and do things like this. They loved their little mother because she taught them how to do all the things that, that a grown, when she was grown up and became a mother, how to take care of her and feed her family. Respect was the most important thing. Don't say anything no matter what you see don't talk foolishly. You might embarrass your clan or you might embarrass the other clan that's visiting. Those are the things they used to talk about. Don't ask a different clan to go with you if you're going hunting. If you're going somewhere, doing something, if, if they get hurt, your whole clan has to pay for this. And the one thing for the longest time that I've been coming uh, to all the meetings, I guess the one thing, Harold, that I have never heard, unless I just missed it, is Kowakan uh, when you're making peace. If something happened, like if something happened to a different clan that was with me and like, Supposing we got in a car wreck or a boat accident, and I, w I got saved because I knew how to swim, then my clan would have to pay the person's uh, death to their clan. I haven't heard this explained. I, I know some that my mother taught me, uh, but it, I think what I'm saying is, 
some of the things that I know about it, I'd like to hear from from other people that know about it, uh, because that's that was why we were taught, don't ever take another clan with you uh, that might get hurt, get killed, or something, because your whole clan will have to pay for that. That's why people respected each other. In even what they say to each other, you had to be careful. I'm happy to be here, and I'm, uh, I grew up in the old way. My parents couldn't read or write English. I was taught uh, Clinkett. All the people in Yakutat, I know their names in Clinkett because my mother would say, Hagusu Yutakoa. Where's, uh, let's say, Tanuk? That was how Bremner's Clinkett name. Hagusu Tanuk. All she knew of the people in Yankatat was by their Clinkett name. So I learned all, all the people's name in Clinkett. I got to where I had to, being the youngest one, I got stuck with her and went to pot lodges. And uh, so I had to help her stand up and talk and call people by their Clinkett name. I know the Tequiti names, I know the the Kaguantan names, Kenekwan names, and Chukhadi, basically all the different clans in Yakshad. I'm not saying I know everybody down here just because they're Chukhadi or Tequiti, but in Yakutat, I know who is Tequiti just by their name or Chukhadi, because you get to know that once you get into it. Uh, we have a young lady that's interested in taking the Clinkett language, reading and writing it and talking it. And so my sister and I have, uh, my sister can read and write the Clinkett language, so she wrote down all the Clinkett names by clans, and then we recorded it so that she could pronounce it right. And she is doing a wonderful job and I'd like to recognize Rhoda Jensen, my friend. I call her my daughter, even though she's Kaguantan from Haines. Would you stand up, Rhoda? And she's in charge of the Clinkett uh, teaching in Yakutat. She's from originally from Haines? Uh, Pelican. She's related to uh, Paddocks. And it's it just wonderful to have her. Uh, the Clinkett tribe in Yakutat has really gotten the, the language program going. And uh, it's so important, like this young man, Florentist son, says, it thrilled me to hear him talking like he was. It made me feel so good. And the lady here, the last one that spoke, my grandfather, one of my clan grandfathers, his name was Wazich, gave me the Clinkett name Tehtin. I recognized that as soon as she said it. And uh, those things are so important. They are. Uh, your name, a lot of times, your uncles, your grandparents especially will watch like like they were saying here, they watch you. They 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 begin to realize uh, what kind of person you're going to be. If you're going to be a serious person and you're curious, they know that you could uh, really uh, become a, a housemaster. And there's certain things you do a cut to shoot. Once you're chosen for what you're going to do, you. You practice, you go into the water in the morning, you do things that is going to make you strong physically, emotionally, so that you can be what they want you to be for your clan's sake. And also, on the opposite tribe, like the young man who was referring to Hadda Kanuku, 
Shada Shayada Mantin Lies Kadaksa Ye away to Sagu Nachlil Kashada Satakhani to Hun Hayu Sitak Jim Yu to Sagu and my grandfather's older brother from Sitak. I, I have never had the nerve. I respect you people as, as my own people. And, and I have been a shy person all my life. I think you get to the age finally where you go, I have so much respect for you people as my own people. At times, uh, I'm, I've just, I've always been too shy to talk. To, to say, hey, I know you, you know, or this is who I am and this is where I come from. And uh, as I understood it, Harold, um, when you're given, especially a uh, non native, a clinket name, I know that it should just be an ordinary name, not a, a, a you know, like like the ladies here stressed to not a higher person, not not and like you make up uh, names, you can even make up your own names and and uh, give them a name, but more or less, if they're adopted. It's sort of like an honorary name. They can't give it to somebody else, but they have to have respect for it. And like our people that watched our children and what kind of person they thought they were gonna be. And that's how you named them. That's the way I understood it. So in a clinket, in an English language then, Actually, we give adopted person explained in English as an honorary thing. They cannot, they're not, uh, uh, they don't have the privilege of giving clinket names or adopting somebody. And uh, they're just going to have that name and be a member of your clan. So anyway, I'm happy to be here. And this lady was talking old clink, and I always say sometimes uh, when we're at the uh, clinket language class, I'll say, hey, you're saying it the wrong way. You're interpreting that clink clinket word by English meaning. You don't do that. Clinket talking is talking backwards uh, when you interpret the white man's sentence. It goes backwards in clinket. That's old clinket talk. I recognize that with this lady. And I want to thank Harold and the rest of you for giving me the chance to talk. I'm happy to be here and learn more and learn the things I have I am forgetting. I thank every one of you. Thank you. Before my aunt talks, I just want to say I think uh, clinket is straightforward. It's English that's backwards. <laughs> my English name is Bertha Karras, and I'm from Sitka. And I really agree with um, with you for your comments and the names that should be given. And um, I know a Japanese um, man came and he wanted a Tlingit name. And I said, yeah, I think I'll name you Kushikitsati. He's a book writer. And that's what it means. And another comment that I heard from uh, people, a uh, bartender in Sitka wanted an Indian name. And I guess the clients got together and they named him Kushta. <laughs> A good name for someone who destroys our young people with alcohol. Thank you for your time.
something that is sincere. If you speak, click it, understand, click it real well, would you please raise your hand? Uh huh. Gonna change. Ah, a twice a girl, a high, a saitza, which a who is a good to a sock. Ah, yes, now he had a city these are the words that we try to teach our young people. I am also grateful to this young lady who started the language, reviving the language, Rhoda. Yes, to you too. I told her the first time that we had a meeting, I told her about my uncle. My uncle used to say to me, I'm not going to teach you the fine points of being a clinket. Our, la our language is going to be lost and our way of life is going to be lost. And I used to wonder, what are the fine points of being clinked? After working with these young people for a long time, every time I tried to tell some of the parables that we grew up with and some of the history that we grew up with. They asked me, what is the ceremony for this? What is the ceremony for that? Some of them I know. Some of them have been forgotten. And this is what I feel really sad about. It hurts when I cannot answer them. There are so many things that has been taken away from us. Christianity came among us and said, you will not do your dances you will not have your totem poles. You will not have your potlatches. There was a lot of things we've lost through that. Right behind them came the Bureau of Indian Affairs. They said, you will not speak your language. It was really amazing to me now that I look back at it. Because that is where we lost our history, our culture, our language. A lot of the people a lot of the young people that come before me have lost their language. So therefore, how can you pass on something that you have lost? 
it's just by luck that I belong to the scholars in Sea Alaska and I listen like I used to listen around a campfire. I call it 880 now. I was eight years old and they were 80. The stories that they have, some of them we try to remember and bring them back. Some of them I try to remember and pass on to these young people that I have been working with. It is sad. They call it the box of knowledge. If one started thinking back, that if you grow up in your uncle's house, this is what the way of life. This is the way it was. The uncle will take and he will teach his young nephews from the time they are six and a half years old, seven years old, they go to their uncle and he tells them all about the relationship with other clans, other people, as the boats traveled, the canoes traveled all the way down to Washington, all the relationship, how you improve it, how the trade routes go. And he teaches his nephew. He'll watch his nephews, look at them. As he tells his story, it's really interesting. Sometimes in the evening, after you get through eating your deer meat, your seal meat, your bear meat, they'll all sit around a fire in a house not much bigger than this or smaller than this area we're sitting in. And sometimes he'll say, oh, my back is sore. I'm going to go to sleep right in the middle of a story. He'll walk off and he'll go to bed. And then next evening, he'll come back, sit down, and everybody's waiting for the story to start. But he'll look at his nephews, and he'll tell them, I was telling you a story about the raven and the king salmon. Where did I stop? You better tell him. And then, what he'll do, some other times, later on, after telling his stories, we call it repetition, teaching. He'll ask his nephew, say, I want you to tell me when the eagle came rain and the raven in the darkness, how he got light. And so you have to stand up and tell him. That is the final test. All of these parables, all of these stories that were handed down. And some of them we have forgotten. And this is the one that used to amaze me. They sit around and tell these stories and sometimes they actually forgot a section. And they used to say, how I wish my grandfather would come back just one more time to tell me that story. I find myself in that position quite a few times.
I think you've heard that. Please. These stories always told you in parable ways what life is going to be like. It is one after another. So now I see a lot of people who are learning clinket. But something else is happening. Some people learn a little clinker and they think they know quite a bit. A lady from Huna, one time when she was talking to us, she said, our culture is like tablecloth that's on a table. We are sitting around the table, and we are holding the edge. That's all. In the middle of this table is a lot more that we will never bring back. And I find that to be true. It is sad how much they have taken away from us. But we were talking this morning, somebody was talking here, and he said, teach them who they are. Teach them what their aduwe is. Teach them the last part that we're on, where they're land is where they come from. I know that works. I know it works really strong because for 27 years I've had the pleasure, I've had the honor of working with little ones from that high to my grandmother's back there. My grandmother, because I was adopted, my father was not from here by the Shanko KD. My grandfather on the other side is Te KD, Ku'u, of the Brown Bear Clan. And it was always beautiful to listen to how the Brown Bear Clan migrated up the coast on the outside. And when they saw that light way up ahead, when they finally got to it, it was a mountain that was still blowing on fire. And they called it Sook, that which fire is coming out of. Mount Edgecombe. And I called up the park service because it always bothered me. When did that happen? So I finally got smart and I called the park service in Sitka and I asked, when did Mount Edgecombe blow its top the last time? He said, 950 years ago. It was really neat. It was just like something happened. I had the honor and privilege of going to Stanford with Harold. And I saw something there that I had thought about 
for generations upon generations here. They used to talk about Gish tik means kelp rope. Rope that's made out of kelp our grandfathers used to use. It would bother me because I didn't know, couldn't figure out how they tied it together. But when we were going through, the display they set up for us, here was a rope. It's made out of kelp. It's made tied to the halibut hook. And when I picked it up, it was just like picking up a piece of wire. But that's what they did. They took that long bulk cup and they stripped it to the size of a pencil. And it was tied together. I had seen it after nearly 80 years, because I'm nearly 80 years now. So if you search for it and it is there, but it is not all there because we have lost quite a bit. I look back at it in something. But I always say that if you teach these young people who they are, eventually you'll see their eyes start sparkling when you put in what is known as to the inner courage, once you put that into them, you better get out of their way because they'll dance their heart out for you. I'd like to thank you. I know we can be here for a month. Each one of us have a story to tell because I said my name is Wush Jukhuish when they had the potlatch for my uncle, they gave me two more names. One is Shishchishan, the other one is Sakakwa. And when the woman who gave me that name, Maggie John, she said, it's because you spent a long time with your uncle. I was six and a half years old when they took me from Juneau, they sent me back to Yakutat. My mother had brought me down here. And from six and a half till I was 21, I hunted, I fished, I listened to his story. I rode many miles while he was sitting back at the boat telling me stories as we were going along. But even then, I forgot soon. I thank you very much. In English, my name is Frances Krauss. I think you understood that. And I have a question about <clears throat> name giving. Every time I've seen name giving, they always may put money on their forehead. And is this a accepted ritual or is that made up? That's what I want to know. And um, I've had problems with people giving our names away because we have Raven Frog names. And we've been trying to come up with names and somebody will say, like I call, nicknamed my daughter, Me Too, in think it's Hatsu. And somebody said, oh, that's my relative's name. So how do we handle all those kinds of things? So if you can answer what the um, ritual is for name giving, I would appreciate it. And that's all I have to say. Uh, who do I give this to? Oh, you can't? You might want to answer you. Oh, I want to answer Tough one. Okay, I can only refer to um, 
when we uh, when we uh, give names. Um, as a young girl, when I was growing up, I watched my uncles when they had Kluik and Huna. And I remember uh, the money being rubbed on the forehead. And um, I remember them saying that, that they were going to give a name away and that they wanted brand new crisp bills. This is how important it was to be giving a name. It had to be brand new money that was never touched by anything. And it wasn't just a dollar, it wasn't two dollars. They were, um, I remember seeing fifty dollars and rubbing it on their forehead. And um, we started practicing that at our clue, the people that want um, think it names and if we agree to it, we're asking them to bring their own money. The money, I remember seeing my um, uncle and them, the, the money never came out of the, the uh, money that was brought out for the clue. It was always brought from someplace else. You never touched the money inside the um, bowl. So um, that's what we're doing. We don't, uh, we don't touch the money inside the bowl. The money inside the bowl is to pay off the people are, that are your clu'ik, people that are your guests. So for that reason, we, they bring their own money. And um, I think in uh, doing that and in practicing that, they'll appreciate their uh, name a little more and they'll uh, have the sense of belonging a little uh, better than just getting the name. Some people think just because you have a name, you know, you heard how they think they can take um, responsibilities and all that kind of things, but uh, we need to just in listening to everybody talking here, we need to uh, maybe invite all the adoptees and talk to them. Next clan conference. And uh, because it is important, the name giving is important. The name giving is uh, given to you at birth. Some of you um, heard that, and then uh, like my son uh, Raymond here, my uncle David, Jack David was in uh, Mount Edgecombe, and he, was, he knew he was going to die. And um, one day I saw him, I was working at the Mount Edgecombe Hospital. One day I saw him, and he was just really sad. And I went by him and I was talking to him and saying get and he said, I'm not gonna come back. There's nobody I can give my name to. And I went back upstairs to work and and then I thought about it. It bothered me all night long too. So the next day when I went to see him, I said, Uncle is it okay if I name my firstborn after you? And he's, he slapped his uh, legs and he clapped his hands and anybody that would listen to him, he was, he was telling them, I'm gonna come back. I'm going to come back. And this is how important it was for them, for their name to be carried on. So when we give our thinking names to our children and to our relatives, we're bringing the ancestors back to live among us again. You know, uh, one of the topics we had here was reincarnation. And uh, <coughs> our people believe in that also, but our I can't remember what the other question was, but that uh, it is, I do remember uh, seeing that as a young girl and I, 
I was probably six years old, and I'm going to be 69 this year. So it's been been done for quite a long time. Did you want to? You might have answered the other question. It had to do with ownership of the names. She said uh, that they're uh, frog names that other people seem to know, or I say, oh, well, that's my frog name. So it's uh, ownership of the names. I think you answered it, but I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit more about that. I don't think you, like we said earlier, we don't have to give a wait for a party to give anybody a name, especially if they're your family. Children, grandchildren can give them names right away. If you want to reinforce that at a party and put money on it, then you can put money on that name. Then that goes to someone who's a guest there and they witness that name being given. I've seen well, at my dad's party when they gave the name to Edwell and the clan mother, they used a tina instead of money to reinforce those names. I think Andrew Hope and his son had a book out, and he mentioned in the book that you could get a name from both sides. Because I remember my grandmother, my great grandmother's name was Kadukti, and my grandma Liz on my mother's side always called me Kadukti. But my, on my father's side, they called me Yatchag. So, uh, is it possible to do it from both sides? I think, um, <clears throat> again, that's uh, kind of honorary, uh, honorary um, practice when uh, Yekwa. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll have my feet answer the question down here. My English name is Violet James. I am Williams. I'm Kaguantan from Kukit, and I'm not Claw for Kukit. And the question that was just asked, yes, it's possible. We always have a tribal sister. Do in Ayate they called and clink it like me, Mrs. Johnny Khatka. She's a true Canadian and I'm Kaguantan. But because of our father, we had we could take that name. I was it's a pet name. Pet name for her. that's your tribal sister, so you can use it. Like she say Khatkago, that's me. But you can't take my name because I'm already a Chukanedi Dutchman. My grandfather was Ikanachtutin. His English name was James Obert. Ralph Knudsen carries that name. And my father's name was Walter Obert Kuhuk from Takhit uh, Snail House, Dachtin Tanyati. I'm Chukanedi Dutchman and I'm Kaguantan. My grandfather is John Marvin from Alquit uh, Clean. So I was brought up in this clinket culture. My grandmother used to tell me, when you go out that door, you're a white in a white man's world. When you come back in here, so this is why I never forgot my Tlingit language and my culture. They taught my culture to me from the time I was a little girl by my uncles, great uncles. And I've been listening to some of the questions. Like now they're talking about adoption name. Yes, you can make up your own. Like at my brother George Obert's payoff, I adopted two people and I made up my own name, Judy, is the lady I adopted, she's a white lady, she's been with me for my tribal sister for over 30 years. I gave her her daughter, so you can make up your own names, you don't have to use your priceless names. 
Your priceless slaves are to stay within your family, in your household. That's the way I was taught by my grandparents. And so I've always stuck to that culture. And they said something about peacemaking. And a peacemaking, you can't have a deer unless there's bloodshed. If there's a bloodshed, then they have to have a peacemaker on the raven and the eagle side. I was in one of them because it happened during my time when my uncle died. They had to have a peace party between the ravens and the eagle. And the peacemaker was taken was Joseph Pratt. And from the raven was taken Johnny James. And then they took Jimmy Martin from the wolf house and William Johnson from the Raven Nest House. Because there was two bloodsheds, and that was the only time they have a peacemaker. My grandma said, you can't have a peacemaker just out of the names. There has to be some big tragedy that takes place. So people can get along together again. They make a peacemaker so that thing will never be thrown up to anybody's face again. I hope that explains Selena's uh, question. She was asking the question about a peacemaker. So that, did that answer enough questions for you guys? Okay. In this cheese, Kana would claim you had to a sock. Chuck could he hit Kagwan Tan. Duck Luedi Dutch Khan, Shandikedi Dutch Khan, Kluk Nahadi Dutch Khan. I'm Huna Gawu, I'm from Huna, I was raised there. My mother's Pauline, Pauline Abbott is her maiden name, John Abbott, Doyle Abbott. Uh, our, my family's bloodline runs in Catlian Street. My father is uh, John Smith, he's uh, African American. He's a uh, was very well decorated. He was in the World War II and the Korean War. Um, my father died when I was pretty young. I was separated from my mother when I was young, but I moved on. My father uh, passed away, and I was sent back to my mother, who was in Huna, and was married to my, now to become my stepfather, was uh, Warren Shakely, which was Shun Decay. This is his mother. And uh, that's how I become. My, my question is, is if you listen, like my grandmother is Duck Luedi, um, Margaret Abbott, she's Nakla for the, the killer whale. And um, my question is, is uh, my, my grandmother was Duck Luedi. It's funny that I'm called Guantan. How could my grandmother be Duck Luedi? Well, my grandmother was Edna Fulton, and she was really sick. And when she was married to my grandfather, uh, John Abbott, and he was uh, Kluk Nahadi. And um, uh, she took care of her, she passed away, and my father, or my grandfather, ended up marrying her. So she became my grandmother. And then the other side where my, my mother um, married Warren, which was a Shundi Katie. My question is, is, you know, when I do my introduction and I'm talking, you know, I wasn't adopted. I'm, I was born Clinket, and there was a time where Violet James here introduced me, and she said that I was adopted. And and she, in her in her times, of hard times, a lot of times, um, families were were given. My she lost her son, and just the way my mom was, my mom put my hand in her hand and gave me to her just uh, because she loved her and, they, and that's, I wasn't adopted. She said that one day, but I was born called Guantan. But I just want to know my status. Can I, you know, um, is it okay to say who I am? I'm proud of my grandmother. She, her, at that time, my, my stepfather stepped to play because I lost my father and he, he taught me how to be strong and all my uncles, you know, taught me how to hunt, to fish, to carve, to, all the things she taught me about our culture and the dancing and my little brother, he's the same way, you know. So I have a lot of respect for her and my grandmother took care of all my uncles. 
uh, Margaret Abbott, so I have a lot of respect for her. I just want everybody to know who I am and where I come from, and that you're going to see a lot more of me. And um, I just want to know my status. I don't want to be a leader, but I'm not a follower. You know, I'm like that Cat Leanne when he come down the river and nobody saw him. All of a sudden, everybody starts. That's me. I'm the guy in the background you don't see, but things get done. But I just want to know my status, and, and, and is that okay for me to introduce myself in, the, in those ways? And I just want to say, Harold, I know we're going through some real hard, hard times, and I read your letter. And, uh, you know, when I was a young man growing up, my, my mother spent a lot of time in the ANS, and she never told me who I was until I didn't know I was Cal Guantan until she died. She always pushed me out there, and I know you can remember the times that I was, it didn't matter whether it was Raven Eagle, what clan, Duck Luady, Wishkitan, I was always there. I was always helping. And I think she did that in a reason that she was teaching me to always be there for her people. And that's the way I am. You, you, you'll see me in the background, no matter what clan, what I, is because my mother taught me that, and my grandmothers. And uh, my grandmothers were very, very, um, they went to every church. It wasn't no uh, Russian Orthodox, Presbyterian. We went to every church. I think I've been baptized in every one of them. But I just want to let you guys know who I am, and you're going to see more of me, and that I'm very proud of my, my grandmother, Margaret, and I love, yeah, go ahead. Can I answer that before you start? It's, okay. You're honoring those that raised your family and who became part of your family. My grandfather wasn't born when his true father died. His father was Te Kwede. But his grandmother married a Chukanedi, and through that he became a Chukanedi grand Chukanedi child. And those are the grandfathers my father knew were the Chukanedi, even though they weren't his biological grandfathers. His grandfathers were Tequedi, and those who was, those are who he acknowledged as his grandfathers was not only his biological grandfathers Tequedi, but also those that raised his father, the Chukanedi, and he became their grandchild as well. And they're always honoring those that were in his life that were part of his family. Sheesh. I just want to say, too, because of the, my background, I never got my Clinkett name until my mom passed away. And I threw a party for a few weeks for my mom and Andy Jackson. And um, I received my Clinkett name. My Clinkett name is Kana Wuklain, comes from the Eagle Nest House. I was named after Chuck Miller, my true cousin. Uh, Mary Miller wanted me to have his grandfather's name. His name is John Smith. His name, Clinkett name, is also Kana Wuklain. And I also hold another name that was given to me during Dan and Marino's party. That's my great, my great, great, great uncle. And it goes back to when, um, during my mother's party, I, I did a skit as uh, Popeye. And ever since then, everybody wants me to come as Popeye. My other Clinkett name is Young Waka, as Young Sailor. And that was given to me because of fun time. Finish cheese for your words. And Harold, uh, I always remember uh, as a young kid pulling on your tunic. And I always remember you, you know, not just you, but all the elders. I wouldn't be who I am or how I am if it wasn't for all those elders, not just one. It wasn't just one that it was all of them. And um, just like in, when we're working in a workplace or anything, we teach our kids basketball. We teach them to be a team. We teach our kids wrestling to be a team. Well, we got to come back to, you know, we have to learn that too because we all got to learn to be one. We have to learn to stick together. And I know that's what my mom taught me. That's why she never told me who I was. She wanted me to be there for all everybody. And I know I don't see 
a whole bunch of faces that I do, but people who know me, you know, I usually bust in the door somewhere at some time to help. And it's cheese. I love you guys. So my question in regards to name giving and so forth is, I work in the school district and I teach Alaska Native culture and I come upon a lot of children who do not have Tlingit names. And I like how you cleared it up in the essence of being able to give Tlingit names in um, using plants, flowers, and so forth. Um, but I think that our kids really want to belong. And um, one of the things that I do tell them all the time is I talk about the history of us losing our language and not to feel um, bad that they don't have a Klinket name because it's not their fault. But we do need to come up with a system to help these kids have that sense of belonging and to have a ceremony for them and that they can have a Klinket name and know that they can, uh, they were born Klinket. Their mothers are Klinket. And so it's hard for me to um, find ways for them to get their true Klinket name. Um, a lot of it is through the history, and I know that Klinket and Haida has been doing a lot of um, taking information, just such as like this clan conference. They asked for your Klinket name, your village, your Kwan, um, your clan, your house, if you knew all these things. Is it at all possible for all this stuff to be together so that when our kids do come to a point of understanding how these Klinket names come to be that there's a resource for them to get these Klinket names. And so with that, I'd just like to say for the next clan conference or what have you, that we try to come up with something that will help our children get their Klinket names. Thank you. I want to say a few words before we go on here. I'm supposed to be the moderator here, and we've gotten way off subject several times here. And we're running out of time here. We're going to take these. We're going to take these. I'm the moderator, okay? Thank you, Sergey, my uncle. I'll take these couple more questions, but we've got to close up so people can go to lunch here. We've got another session coming in here. So my aunt will ask a question, then Sergey, then we really need to wrap up here, and I'll have Ida finish the session for us. I just want to say that the adoptive people who are not Tlingit are deserving of the generic so-called names. But those who have, are really Tlingit are entitled to real Tlingit names when you find out their family and their names are given. I'm going to be very brief, and I think as moderator you can just cut off particularly us younger ones. Um, I have a sort of an observation and a question. I think, and it's in, in due humility because I'm not Tlingit born, just adopted. Um, I think one of the problems, and we can have a website and lists of names, but one thing that, I mean, I've been thinking about a lot, my impression is that houses and clans used to cooperate a lot more and talk to each other, clan members, but when you have people, A, living in different communities, and, but worse than that, not talking to each other, that's when you have one branch giving a name, the other branch doesn't even know they've already given that name. And so they're also giving the same name. And then you end up with the same, two kids having the same name and all kinds of problems. So I think the bottom line is how to get members of the same hit or na clan talking to each other and then have that, you know, treasure house of names shared. But my question was I was thinking of how to link Lee's session this morning with this one, and the question to Harold, but everyone else as well. I understand perfectly what Harold is saying, that your mother is most important, it's matrilineal, but Lee's point was, as I understood it, that you're trying to give Tlingit children a sense of pride and identity. So if the child's father is Tlingit, and it's a good family, they have a sense of pride, but mother is not Tlingit, whether she's white or Yupik or Navajo, how are you going to 
give a child a sense of equal pride with a child whose mother's tlunkit. Because you're saying somehow to the child that you're not equal to the other one because your mother's not tlunkit. I'm just asking as a friend to all of you, not in terms of just necessarily clan leader or spokesman, but in terms of somehow, since we're still matrilineal here, how are you going to treat these kids on the same level? We are who we are through our mothers, and that's not changing. I didn't make the rules. Well, I didn't make the rules. That's the way we were created. I had a whole list of things to go through here, and I don't know if I should go through them or just let Ida close here. I took notes as people were talking. There's so much here. I'll just go through the goals real quick at the end here. One is giving names out to those who need names, those of us that have family members that need names yet. Before we adopt any more non-natives, if there's people like Sergey's talking about whose fathers are Clinkett and the mothers aren't, go to the grandfathers, see if they can give them a name. Because their grandchildren, if the father's Clinkett and his father happens to be Clinkett, that grandfather can give the children names. I've been giving names to my clan members. I have a long list of Clinkett names from many clans, but it's my clan's names that I've been keeping alive and giving to those that have been being born. I've made up names. I've got plenty of names for white people. <laughs> We've given grandchildren names. Uh, There's so much here that I had to say, but we just ran out of time and got off subject, so I'll let Ida close this. Um, I'd just like to say that in our family, my parents uh, made sure that we knew our names and that we were taught uh, that uh, the girls, most of us are married, none, uh, um, none clink it. And uh, we have looked after that. We looked after our children, all of us, and they, they, um, they have names. And uh, for those that we have adopted, my dad always said that um, they have the honor of having names, but they don't have um, authority to be leaders. They can't be leaders. Uh, they just have to sit quiet and, and, uh, and listen and respect respect their clan because um, we were all taught that we had to we had to be really um, respectful of each other and sometimes or times when we adopt people they don't um, they don't follow those those rules so the first thing we learn as little children is respect for each other and we have to make sure that those people that we adopt uh, respect each other <coughs> I could close this uh, with a prayer. If you just want to sit, it, it's okay. Ach an chau, ach an chau, stun ha ilyach, iji is ye jenek i chasati. Chahawak shik enesni, e at sakahini, ha shagun isati. E kakak kakak tus ti, a de et a kiw ariyach, you nach tus git. Sisaji narek. Ya ha shuga a itu dah et was ku hak osit kasagan a kag a kartu adi hatu in at aids yet the hanitin ere hakas neher esiti kaha an kau la kunis chief chief